Hello and welcome to the lab. In this video, I want to show you how easy it is to replace a hot end on a Bamboo Lab X1C. And I will be replacing it with a hot end I got on Amazon for a very specific reason. So this is by the brand Hike Top. I'll add the Amazon picture here and a link down below. But why I have been replacing hot ends on my X1Cs with this one is for the sole reason that the nozzle itself is removable. The Bamboo Lab original design has this whole hot end as one piece, including the heat brake, the heat sink, and the nozzle. One solid piece. I find it kind of a pain to have to take this whole thing out and buy a couple of these full setups just for different nozzle diameters. I personally like the liberty of installing these aftermarket hot ends so that I can go ahead and change only the nozzles. Let's talk about everything you get in this little kit. It doesn't come with a fan, but what it does come with is a little replacement sock. This is what you put on to protect the rest of the hot end, helps filament not get stuck, minimizes your chance of burning, and protects the whole assembly. Within this little box, there's also this little plastic bag, which comes with some thermal paste for the heater cartridge and the thermistor, a spare 0.4 millimeter nozzle, the retention clip. So this little clip is used to make sure the heater cartridge and the thermistor are all held in place on the actual hot end, as well as two tools, the wrench used for removing the nozzle and an Allen key for if you need to change the orientation of this centerpiece via, there are two little bolts right here, set screws. I would recommend doing this procedure on your printer when it's off. So once you remove the front cover, this is what I'll be replacing today meaning there's these two bolts up here that I need to remove. And you can do this with an Allen key that comes with your printer. Of course, before attempting to replace your hot end, it's a great idea to double check that your material has been unloaded. As you can see, that wasn't the case here. I made a false assumption, so it was a little bit difficult for me to dislodge the hot end, but I'm able to snip the filament here and just pull it back up through the AMS. I also actually take the cover off. I just pull off the one connector. That way it's easier to kind of maneuver with. I know you can 3D print like a special bracket that I've seen on printables and Thingiverse that makes it easier for you to keep the little cover connected and off to the side, but I just take it off. Just quickly remove these two bolts. What I've started doing is removing the actual print bed and using the fact that the bed is magnetic to just hold on to my bolts while I'm working. We removed these two bolts. This should come out with a little bit of a wiggle. Once this is dislodged from the whole extruder assembly, there's a few cables we need to unplug. The skinny cables here that are a little bronze color, brass color with heat shrink. This is the thermocouple. It's best to not pull at the cable, try and get to the connector and remove it from the little prong to unlatch it. Next up, these really thick cables right here are the heater, ceramic heater cartridge cables. So again, just try and go right at the connector and pull to remove it. Lastly, we have this four cable connector featuring one white, two gray, and one black wire. And this is for the fan. Again, remove it right at the connector source. And officially our hot end has been removed. As you can clearly tell, I am changing the hot end due to a crazy uh, print fail. Let me give you a close up of this. This is the classic print fail of the print not sticking properly to the bed and instead becoming stuck to the hot end where the material just keeps extruding, extruding, and becomes a solid clump around the nozzle which is why we need to replace it. And honestly, for the sake of time, I'd rather replace it than try and clean this up. You can see the ceramic heater under here. And here's a close-up look at the material blob I pulled off of the hot end, hence why I'm replacing it. You can see the hot end sock is totally fused within this blob. Next, 
So off of the original hot end assembly, you will need to remove and keep the fan on there. The kit I buy on Amazon does not come with a replacement fan, and I'm not 100% sure if the replacement hot ends that you buy directly on the Bamboo Lab site come with fans either. So that's the only part that you'll want to preserve. Here is a closer look at our ceramic heater. You can see there's two distinct sides on it, a very flat side, and then the side at which the two wires poke out and are coated. This is our temperature sensor. It looks like a little rain droplet. It's made of two wires that are brass or copper colored, and there's heat shrink near the end. A close up of the main hot end structure, including the heat block and the heat sink, as well as the nozzle. So I would just like to comment about how there's a very clear set of ridges where the cartridge is supposed to sit on the hot end. So as you can see, there's a lip right here and right here. Consistently notice this issue with buying this hot end. As you can see on the original Bamboo Lab assembly, the heater cartridge is located on the side of the heatsink where there's a channel for the wires to go through and up to the top. So what we'll actually have to do is unscrew these set screws and twist this little heat block portion around so that the ridges are on the same side as this cable channel. Okay, let's do that really quickly. And thankfully the hot end kit comes with a little Allen key to do just that. As they're set screws, you only just have to undo them slightly and then twist the little heat brake assembly 180 degrees. It's helpful to do this on a flat surface and I do one set screw at a time, adjusting as I need. So when you're done, the two ridges on this side of the heat brake should be on the same side as this cable channel in the heat sink. Next, we can apply this thermal paste to the heater cartridge and the thermistor and install it. Compromise setup. So firstly, I will start with the thermistor. I open the thermal paste so I can dip the thermistor in. You just need a little bit that will cover the tip. And then there is a hole on the side of the heat block that you just put the thermistor inside of, easy as pie. And then when it comes to the heater cartridge, I will just put thermal paste on the flat back side, place it in between the two ridges. You can also go ahead and add a little bit of a bend to this thermistor wire so it goes up and through the cable channel, just like that. Now, it's definitely a good idea to have some kind of tissue or wet wipe around because the thermal paste gets a little bit messy, but just apply a decent coat on the back of the cartridge. I like to add a little bit extra because I know I will be gluing it on here. And so instead of putting it on both surfaces, I just add a little extra on one. I don't necessarily think the front needs it, but I always coat a little bit just to give a protective layer between the clip and the cartridge. And then you can just go ahead and squish it in between the two ridges and wipe off any of that extra paste that oozes out. The next part is this little retention clip. So we can see that the clip, if you look at it from this profile, widens out on the sides. You want to put the clip on such that the widen out side is where the thermistor is. That way it doesn't pinch the wires. Push the clip on just like this. You see how this little tongue piece is flat on the ceramic heater. And again, the little widened part of the clip is exactly where the thermistor is. This keeps the thermistor in place without crimping the wire and causing any kind of kinks or potential damage. So that's it. The very last step here in our assembly is just adding the sock on. As you can see, there's a little cutout on the sock right here. That cutout goes where the ceramic heater wire blob is. So we would put on the sock just like this, but I'm going to wipe my fingers a little bit better so I don't make the sock any dirtier. Perfect, and that is our full assembly.
The next step is to install our fan back onto the newly assembled hot end. How do you know what side of the heatsink to put the fan on? Well, firstly, it's the side where the cables run through the heatsink, but also if you take a look at the holes on the heatsink, there are actually some threads. Let's see if I can zoom in. There's threads on the heatsink, and that's how you know it's the side we're screwing the fan on. How about what direction do we screw the fan on? Well, we want the sticker to go on the inside, so we'll be attaching it like this. And it's pretty obvious what orientation you need to attach the fan on because there's only two attachment bolt holes on the bottom of the fan that line up with the two holes on the bottom of the heatsink. Using the original bolts on the previous assembly, we're going to reattach the fan and then install this back on the printer. And so I don't use all of the thermal paste that comes with the little kit, so I just put it right in one of the little Ziploc bags that the replacement hot end comes with, and then I keep everything in this little box. Awesome, now that I've finished essentially rebuilding my new hot end, I've added the fan back on. When it comes to reinstalling it in the printer, I like to firstly install it via the bolts up like that, and then worry about connecting all the wires back. So let's do it. You see how I kind of bent the wires over the fan like this? This will make it easier to put it back on the printer. Then you can put the two bolts in to just hold the hot end right in there while you twist it back together. So there's a little clip right here that we can use for our cable management. So we can fit all these cables behind this little clip. So again, with our power off, we can start with the heater cartridge. It's this large connector two pin, and that goes up here. It's actually pretty easy to figure out where every wire goes because all the connectors are different sizes and shapes. Then we have this really small two pin connector. This is for our thermistor or temperature sensor and it just goes right there, right here, right under where the fan goes. And there's only one correct way to put these in so you really can't mess it up. There we go. It's definitely easier with two hands. And then last but not least is our hot end fan. And that connector is just right above the thermistor, it's a four pin connector. So we have officially reinstalled our new hot end. And then the last thing to do is to reattach the cover of the printer. So I just have to connect that loose wire up there to this connector. Okay, so our moment of truth is to turn this printer on, heat up the hot end, load material, and see if it purges just fine. Let's turn this back on. I will also put the bed back on so we're not purging on the magnetic sheet. Okay, let's load a filament. Now, if you smell a little bit stronger of a smell from the hot end when you're first heating it up, I think that's normal. It's consistently happened with every new hot end I've installed, particularly with the fresh thermal paste and the heater cartridge heating up for the first time. So I honestly wouldn't worry. Unless you consistently get that weird stench, then maybe something is going on. This is where I'm keeping track of the temperature. It's doing pretty good, stabilized and everything. Thing. So we should be purging filament right now. Nothing's going to be coming out because the full channel of the nozzle is empty. We've never had filament in there before. So we might have to hit retry a few times on the screen before we see anything come out. Oh, here we go. Good, slowly but surely. Come on. Okay, there we go, and it's purging. Perfect. So I think our hot end replace went just fine. With that sorted, I think I can get rid of the snow. 